by the authority of the Senate of the University. It gives me great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Many congratulations. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, members of faculty, distinguished guests, and of course, graduates. Yeah, big yourself up. Come on. You've had an amazing afternoon. Now, I am honored and humbled to be here with you today, but I have to say, while the Premier League is the most competitive in the world, to be sure, either Brighton ain't getting anywhere near City on May the 12th. I guarantee it. Now, when I arrived at Sussex for my first term back in 1982, I instantly fell in love with the town, I fell in love with the people, and I fell in love with the university. And two things stood out for me in my first week that made me realize that this was the place for me, that for the next few years, I was going to have fun. Now, the first was that within 24 hours of my brother and uncle dropping me off in the family car, I was involved in a rent strike. <laughs> Only this lot are laughing. <laughs> so everything they said about Sussex was true. Activist, a little militant, not afraid to stand up and be counted, to make its voice heard for the greater good. I love that. And you should all be proud that from what I hear, that activism is alive and well. And the second thing that stood out for me in my first few days in Brighton was a sense of belonging, of not feeling like an outsider, a northern lad from, a, uh, from the north heading to a southern town hundreds of miles away from what I knew. And crucially, a sense that I, a black man, was accepted here. It's no surprise to me that Chris Hewton, whom Sussex will honor a little later on today, is the only black manager in the Premier League at the moment, and his club is, of course, Brighton and Hove Albion. Look at the LGBTQ community here, long established since the early 19th century. Compassion and love for all human beings is what I felt when I arrived here. My years at Sussex were actually some of the happiest of my life. Since then, I've lived and worked in many countries right around the world, but all those foreign journeys began here in Sussex. This is where I grew up. It's where I gained self-confidence and self-belief. Now, I needed both those things when I sneaked into North Korea in 2003. That was a barrel of laughs. <laughs> I was pretending to be a tourist to report on the awful, absolutely dreadful humanitarian crisis there of starvation and prison camps. Now, I was pretending to be an English teacher in Singapore, where I lived at the time, and I was taking advantage of the offer of a package holiday put forward by a company to visit the capital, Pyongyang. And I was traveling with a friend, a swimming teacher, who of course was actually my cameraman, who's an Australian. So we land in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, part of a group of 80 tourists, 78 Chinese Singaporeans, an Australian, and a black man. Did we stand out? Oh, we stood out. But our North Korean tour guide, he was, of course, a really, a really a minder for the secret police. He was fascinated by us. He spoke English, and he wanted to know about Manchester United. Uh. He'd never heard of Manchester City, of course, at the time. And we all got on really, really well. Anyway, we get to the hotel. We get in the lift to go up to our rooms. And the lift is packed with people. Thank God. Our minder couldn't get in. He got into the next lift. So we start to go up. 
And I hear these words in a thick Mancunian accent. Are you that reporter, Clive Myrie, off telly? <laughs> no word of a lie. I'm in the most secretive state on earth. The place isn't called the Hermit Kingdom for nothing. I start sweating. It's potentially two years, ladies and gentlemen, two years in a hard labor camp if you're caught, and worse, if they think you're a spy. No, no, I say, don't be silly, my man. I'm a teacher from Singapore. I get mistaken for that Clive Myrie all the time. I'm starting to panic, and the guy says, well, if you're not that Clive Myrie, you bloody well sound like him. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, the lift stops, he gets out. By this time, I am really freaking out. We get to our floor, go into my room, lock the door, and like a script from a bad spy movie, we turn on the radio, turn on the TV full volume, go into the bathroom, lock the door, turn on all the taps, and we're flushing the toilet continuously. Seriously, so no one can hear us because we know all the rooms are bugged. Every single one of them. But I'm still freaking out. What are we gonna do? Should we go and find him, tell him to keep his trap shut? Should we change hotel, but then the minder would get suspicious and there aren't any other hotels anyway? Panic, panic, panic. So I remembered the rent strike in Sussex. So I didn't panic. I chilled. And in the end, we decide to take a deep breath, stay calm, and hope and pray he doesn't drop us in it. Anyway, thankfully, we didn't see him again, and we spent the next 10 days secretly filming. My pieces were broadcast on the 10 o'clock news. And a few months later, I received an email from the man in the lift. <laughs> and you know what he said? I knew it was you. <laughs> Absolutely true. And he said, I bet you probably wondered what I was doing in North Korea. Yes, I was wondering what you were doing in North Korea. And you know what he said? He's a train spotter. <laughs> Lots of people travel to North Korea to see the old vintage rolling stock, a bit like the American cars that you have in Cuba. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a true story. Thank you. You see, Sussex gave me a self-confidence I really didn't know I had. I hope it's given that to you, too. I hope your time here has seen the development of who you are as adults. I hope you've imbibed a little bit of the Sussex spirit to call out injustice when you see it, to help others who may need a hand, and to think beyond yourselves. Congratulations to all of you on this wonderful day, and to everyone at my old gaff. thank you for this honorary degree. Thank you. <laughs>